In the meantime here, the reaction from those in charge in Washington tends to be, at least of late, uh, the economy's fine, inflation's a problem, but we've got a handle on it. And sometimes when it can be an incumbent, powerful Democratic congressman, almost a let-them-eat-cake moment. This is what I mean. Take a look. What have you done and what do you plan to do to help solve uh, our inflation problem? Yeah, well, I grew up in a family where, you know, if the if the gas price went up, the food budget went down. So by this time of the week, we'd be eating Chef Boyardee if, if that budget wasn't going to change, right? So that's what families have to do. Well, he might have been stating the obvious there because a lot of families are sort of going down the food chain quite literally uh, to try to still keep food on the table. But the Chef Boyardee comment did rile many who said that it, it did not help the argument, including my next uh, guest, Mike Lawler, the Republican who's running against Mr. Maloney for that seat. Uh, Mike, it's very good to have you. Uh, what did you make of those comments? Well, Neil, it just shows how out of touch he really is. You know, he has spent the campaign gallivanting around the globe. He went to Paris and London and Geneva, raising money for Nancy Pelosi. He has not been campaigning hard throughout the district. So he really doesn't understand the struggles of people in this district. And we live in one of the highest taxed areas, Rockland and Westchester counties, uh, one of the highest taxed in America. Uh, people are hurting. You go to the grocery store, you're paying $6 for a gallon of milk, four fifty for a carton of eggs. You can't find baby formula. Uh, and then you go to the gas pump and you're paying through the nose. You, you're dealing with home heating costs that have skyrocketed. Uh, and his response is, uh, let them eat Chef Boyardee. I mean, it's a total joke. Uh, he has voted 100 percent of the time with Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden. Uh, he is fully responsible uh, for the disaster that we're dealing with, a 41-year record high on inflation. And I think today, when voters go to the polls, they're going to send a message loud and clear, uh, and we are going to be the face of the red wave and defeat Sean Patrick Maloney, the chair of the DCCC, uh, right here in deep blue New York. Yeah, I mean, that's what's remarkable there. I mean, if you were to defeat him, you would be toppling, a, you know, a Democratic giant. Could be a sign of what's happening in the New York gubernatorial battle. Your thoughts there? Oh, absolutely. You know, Lee Zeldin will be our next governor because voters are focused on two issues, the cost of living, inclusive of inflation, and crime. And Democrats control everything in Washington, Albany, and New York City for the first time in the history of our country, and they've created a mess. Uh, you look at crime, it is surging in New York City, up 36 percent since cashless bail took effect. Sean Maloney said cashless bail was his top priority four years ago when he ran for attorney general. Uh, Forty percent of those released on non-monetary bail have been rearrested. This is not working, and voters want change. And unfortunately, uh, the Democrats have failed to do anything to make voters and residents safe. And they don't feel safe because they aren't. And Lee Zeldin, myself, and others are going to end uh, one-party rule here in New York and across the country and restore balance and common sense. Uh, and voters have the opportunity to do that by getting out and voting uh, right here in New York. Polls are open until 9 p.m. Right. And we hope people exercise their right tonight. Well, we did reach out to Sean Patrick Maloney, the incumbent, and yet, yet to hear back. But one of the arguments his campaign has made, and he has made about you and Republicans in general, is your answer for everything is tax cuts, and they disproportionately benefit the wealthy. What do you say? Well, listen, you know, to me, we have to cut government spending. I mean, the, the Biden administration and Sean Maloney have increased spending by over $4 trillion in just 21 months. Uh, of, course, uh, of course, we want to bring down uh, taxes. I want to lift the cap on salt, which negatively impacts uh, folks in the Hudson Valley, uh, that they're not able to fully deduct their state and local taxes. But we also have to increase uh, domestic production of energy. Uh, it impacts everything we do, and it has helped drive the, up the price of groceries, of home heating costs, of gasoline uh, for, your, for your car. So we need to uh, have a multi-pronged approach uh, and the complete opposite of what Sean Maloney has done, which is to raise taxes on middle-class families, create 87,000 new IRS agents, uh, and negatively right. impact GDP and drive up inflation. Mr. Lola, we'll follow your race very closely, as is the rest of the nation. It's one of the more closely scrutinized races and could be certainly a, a landmark development, especially if you win. We'll keep an eye on it.